Hi friends, welcome to the Share, Invite, and Proclaim channel. My name is Judy. The topic for today is about decision making, God's way. Uh, when you're faced with a major decision in your life, example, should I take the job? Should I marry that person? What should I do? Uh, maybe build a new house with that new promotion and bonus? Should I help my struggling friends and family? Maybe I'm in a dark place. Should I really make that decision to divorce? All of these are major decisions that we have to make. And um, we do have some tools to help us. Uh, many times we think, well, what's God's will for our lives? I've talked about that in an earlier video. Uh, there's five things that scripture tells us about God's will, and they are that you're saved. John 3.16 and Romans 10, verse 9. Uh, secondly, that you live in Jesus and not in the flesh. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Another will of God is that you're sanctified, set apart by God, and declared righteous. And this is from 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, Romans 6.22. And rejoice, pray, and give thanks to God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 and worship God, Psalms 95, for seven verses. And so that's God's will for us. But what we really want is to have some tools that will help us make decisions that will glorify God, decisions that uh, will help us concerning sanctification and righteousness, and that God gets the glory. The Bible is full of people who made bad decisions, and, uh, you know, God does not uh, make things seem just, you know, Disney, everything's okay. Uh, you do hear about some of the, of the wrong decisions that uh, people made. I'll talk about those in a minute, but uh, many made good decisions. For example, Abraham left Ur, the land of Ur, and went to a land, and God made a covenant with him. Mary accepted God's plan for her to be the mother of Jesus. Deborah followed God's plan and uh, became a judge that uh, judge in Israel that allowed them to have peace for 40 years. Esther obeyed God's direction, married a um, pagan emperor, but she was able to save her nation uh, from annihilation. Many of these decisions glorified God and they brought the nation Israel, to Jesus Christ. Some of those who made bad decisions, um, many of them recognized their mistake and their sin, and they asked God for forgiveness, and their relationship was restored. Like David, he made a bad choice to uh, have a baby with uh, Bathsheba, and uh, the baby died, and he asked God for forgiveness, and God restored their relationship. Paul made, Apostle Paul made a bad decision to persecute the uh, first uh, church, the believers. And, uh, but after Paul's conversion, uh, he asked for forgiveness and his sin was restored. And he became an important missionary uh, and started uh, many new churches and also wrote most of the New Testament. Judas Iscariot made a bad decision and it cost him his life. Well, what tools do Christians have that will help us make decisions in line with God's will? Uh, one of my favorite writers is Henry Blackaby, and in his book, Hearing God's Voice, gives us at least 11 tools in which to hear God speaking to us when we're making, uh, when we have to make a, a major decision. He says that we, uh, God will speak to us through the Bible, through circumstances, through fellow believers, through spiritual markers, through your prayers, through discernment, through specific directions, through open and closed doors, through a series of con conversations like phone calls, emails that confirm God's voice to you through peace in your heart and through unity at home and church. That's 11 tools, and I hope that I didn't uh, leave any out, but these are, are tools that will help us make decisions uh, in God's way. 
When you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit works to help you apply Scripture to uh, yourself. Answers to making a decision God's way will always be in line with Scripture. We more easily will hear God's voice when we're in a personal relationship with Him. James 4, 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. God is holy, therefore, if we harbor any sin in our life, our relationship with God suffers. As you read the Bible, look to see what God did in people's lives. You can't go against God's word. Well, God speaks to us through circumstances. Blackaby says that the key to understanding our circumstances, should I do this or do that or go here or go there, is to focus on Christ rather than the circumstance. Circumstances provide the Holy Spirit an opportunity to interpret the events so that God gets the glory. Combined with these tools, the circumstances will become come clear with God's will. In making a major decision, God speaks to us through the Bible, through circumstances, and through fellow believers. Blackaby points uh, out that the Holy Spirit dwells within each believer. And um, when we share our circumstances, God may speak a word through them to confirm your decision. When making a major decision, Blackaby says to look at your spiritual markers. Well, spiritual markers are times that God has spoken to you in the past the Holy Spirit will interpret those events and what God has taught you through those events. Blackaby says that when considering options, see which ones follow what God has been doing in your life. God speaks to us through the Bible, through circumstances, through fellow believers, through spiritual markers, and next, through your prayers. Blackaby reminds us that prayer is not to change God, to give us what we want. Um, Prayer changes us when we hear from God. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Or Jeremiah 33, 3, that says, Call on me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. I love Blackaby saying, when you pray, place, pay close attention to what comes next. You may get the answer right away if you're paying attention. God can use the spiritual gift of discernment to speak to you about a decision you must make. Discernment is the gift one has to know if something is wrong, if it doesn't feel right, um, or if the timing is not right. My daughter has that uh, gift of discernment. The next tool that Christians should use in addition to the Bible, circumstances, spiritual markers, prayers, discernment, is through specific directions. For example, when God wanted the Israelites to build the tabernacle or the temple, he gave, or even Noah's Ark, he gave specific directions. My personal example of this is that God gave me some directions to start a YouTube channel uh, November the 13th of 2016. I woke up that day. I took out a piece of paper to write down what God was saying to me. He gave me the name, share, invite, proclaim, and what each of these words would entail. Now I got the, how I got the message. Now I got the message, but knowing how to do it was my job. As Blackaby says, God works through our weaknesses, not our strengths. And I agree, starting something, something completely new with technology didn't make sense to me because I didn't even fully know how to use my cell phone or computer. But God impressed upon my mind what he wanted, even for the content. If God hadn't given me specific directions, this channel would still be in the thinking about it stage and probably... I'd be thinking about it forever. God was looking for my obedience, not excuses or reasons why I couldn't start this venture. Another way God speaks to us is when we face a major decision is open and closed doors. 
The Apostle Paul wanted to go to Asia to preach the gospel and start new churches, but God closed the door. The Holy Spirit gave Paul a, wis a vision of a man in Europe, inviting him to come there. So Paul accepted the closed door in Asia and accepted the open door to Europe. Blackaby acknowledges that the open door policy can be misunderstood when you focus only on the door and not on God. Additionally, check to see if God opened the door and not the evil one. Use all of these tools to help distinguish between God's way or Satan's way. When faced with a major decision, God speaks to us through the Bible, through circumstances, through fellow believers, through spiritual markers, through your prayer, through discernment, through specific directions, through open and closed doors, and through a series of conversations that confirm what God is saying to you. If emails and phone conversations, conversations with friends and family members, uh, if they go in the same direction, God is speaking to you and confirming a direction. Another tool is peace. When God is involved in your decision making, you find peace. Great peace comes when you're in God's will and plan for your life. Unrest may mean that you need to, to uh, wait in making a decision. God's timing always makes a difference. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The last but not least tool Blackaby suggests in making a major decision is unity. God wants unity in the home and in the church. Acts 4.32 says, And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Paul told the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 1.10, I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree, and there be no divisions among you, but you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. God would not want a married man to not consult with his wife before making a major decision. And both should use these tools as a family to help unity. God would not ask the husband to do one thing and the wife to do the opposite. If you both don't agree, then wait on the decision. Now, all of this won't make any difference if you're in a dark place. Your communication with God is limited or not there at all. If you make a major decision during this time, you're making it on your own. Most of the time, it will be a selfish decision that will lead to consequences that you didn't even consider when you were making the decision in the first place. When you're in a dark place, God hasn't moved. You have. Well, how do I get to a better place? Turn to God. Confess any sin. Read scripture. Pray. Ask for help from trusted friends ask for help from the Holy Spirit, and wait on that decision until the darkness ends, until God shines light that will remove the darkness. John 12, 46 says, Jesus was speaking here. He said, I have come as light into the world so that anyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. In John 9, 5, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So when facing a major decision, Use Henry Blackaby's tools for helping you make the right and the best decision that will, um, that will focus on uh, sanctification and righteousness and will agree with God's plan for your life. I pray that you will find a Bible-believing church where you hear about Jesus, who he was, what he did, and who he is today. And a small group Bible study where you can grow in your faith uh, with fellow Christian, Christians. Thank you for watching.